Hello, this is The Provoke Prawn, and here I am with another behind the scenes video, this time on another case. And the reason for what I'm doing this is multifold, because I want to show what I'm doing in terms of what I'm doing with this case and the thought process to, that goes into it. So this is the Lian Li Air Mini. So it's the Lian Li Dynamic Air Mini. It is a different version of the Snow Edition I did previously, which has essentially perforated holes on metal plates with the front and the top. Instead of dust shields, it just has very thin holes on it. And it's a very nice design that can hold uh, ATX power supply, which the Mini Snow Edition couldn't, and an ATX motherboard, so that's interesting in a number of ways. It comes with three fans, <laughs> two 140 mils that go on the front, and one 120 mil at the back. And those are pre-installed, so it's actually joyful. Now, uh, I set up this case yesterday, over several hours, putting it together with the uh, Zeus Z690 motherboard that I used in the previous Snow Edition. And I've captured loads of footage of that. I've also benchmark tested it, and it seems like this has better air cooling than the Snow Edition, although there are some quirks about that that are worth talking about. For example, I reapplied the thermal paste and I also used an additional fan with a Noctua cooler. And this is part of the sort of intricate thought process that goes into this sort of thing is thinking about the impact that's changing CPU thermal paste. Maybe I should have kept the thermal paste the same for transferring it between cases and then I could have done a video comparing the cases and which one's superior and unfortunately I couldn't really do that from a set of circumstances. But anyway, I built it with just purely the pre-installed fans, so the 240mm and the 120mm at the back, and then the Noctua cooler with two 140mm fans on it, pointing towards the top for exhaust. So there was no fans on the top, and there was no fans on the bottom, and there was no fans on the side, just the front and the rear, and then on the CPU cooler. So it was an interesting setup. I think most people probably won't use it in that basic setup. I think that it's neat that it's installed that way, and my idea is to actually create maybe two videos, um, or one long one, I'm not really sure yet. Probably two, I think two will be better. Uh, one is gonna be an installation video which shows you all the sort of features of this case and how to build in it as standard with just the two included fans and the potential options because you have options depending on what size motherboard you've got. It's a modular case so you can have a smaller motherboard and then you can have a radiator on the top or the bottom or the back has loads of different options. We use an ATX motherboard, you're limited where you can put things and the fans are kind of limited as well for example because of the front mounted fans you can only have two 120 millimeter fans on the bottom instead of three that you could have in the snow edition and uh, same for the side that only has two but the top can hold three and the rear can hold one and you can you're better off with actually two 140 mil fans. I think that most people that are into Lee and Lee products, their cases, will probably want to build this with SL120s or AL120s. I have some of those fans, but unfortunately they are in my main PC case, which is over the other side of the room at the moment, which is my main daily driver that I'm using currently for working and for video editing and for gaming. And so my plan is to strip out my main machine, which is the Dynamic XL case, which I built probably over a year ago now and take the fans from that and put it in here, as well as the motherboard and other bits. And that way I'll have two lots of footage, one of the basic installation and the second one of the full installation. Now, at the same time, I'm also gonna change the Noctua cooler for the Fantex Glacier One 240mm, which I purchased recently on purpose, purely because I really like the look of the design of the pump head and I was curious about the fan setup. So now I have some complexities to this video potentially or what I'm planning because I now have a third video which is an unboxing and installation of this. But I also want to do a sort of standard how you, you know, unbox and install this with the intricacies of that because there's RGB fans but they're not in the traditional sort of setup. They also have covers over them. So I'm gonna go into that 
and talk about those. So the RGB actually comes from some covers that clip over the top and then you have some complexities around the RGB connectors and things like that. Um, I'm going to show how they'd set that up in this case and then I also want to show how to replace those fans on that rad with SL120s and then I'm going to fill this case up with SL120s plus that radiator with the SL120 service sort of unified RGB effect. Unfortunately I only have 120 mil fans and I think this is an optimal case for 140 mil because ideally you have two 140 mils at the front, two at the bottom, two at the top, one at the back and then two on the side probably with a 280 mil radiator but I'm not, I need to check the specs to see whether that would fit or not. But that's my mission for now so I'm going to start by unboxing the Glacier 1 at lunchtime today. In between work, my normal work day I stripped out everything that I built last night which is the motherboard and the fans and the CPU pump. I've left all the power cables and everything in there so it's going to make the build process a lot easier. Now I've got to strip out my main PC everything get everything out of there which is which are basically going to be the motherboard the gpu and the fans and then i'm going to put them in here and then at the same time install the glacier one it's a lot of work to do a lot of videos capture but hopefully another interesting series of videos not just one but i've got one build video on this i've got a second build video with the rgb fans i've got a AIO video and potentially an AIO upgrade or maybe I'll do that in the same thing like if you want to swap it out with SL120s then here's how you do it. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Oh and a, and a video on the Corsair RM850X which I have done in the past but I'm going to revisit because I'm not happy with my previous videos and people seem to like the installation setup videos for those. I don't have the ability to really test and review a power supply unit that's beyond my skill set or technical know-how or even having the technology to be able to test it. Something like Gamers Nexus, they're pretty capable of setup to do things like that. I am not, but I can show you how to install a power supply unit like that with detail in a case like this, which would be useful for hopefully for people that are building for the first time, they bought a case, they're not sure how to install. That's the aim of my videos, is to go into depth on all the different things that you can do. So in this case, perfect example, standard fan setup, then AIO and um, more fans, a lot more fans, because that would become a bit more complicated. And also talk about all the intricacies of things like the power supply unit, setting up with a motherboard, and lots of other things too. So stick with me as I show you some of the behind the scenes bits of that. So now I've got the Glacial 240 MPH thing into a sort of a state already. It's an interesting build. It probably seems a bit complicated, so I think this video will probably be quite useful um, when I've actually put it together because how it works is a mess of cables, as you can see. and. I mean that's going to be difficult to get tidy for a start but essentially the system's pretty simple. You have two fans which have power connections which are daisy chainable so you connect one to the other and then the final one connects to a Y splitter cable which connects to the pump head and the CPU header on your motherboard or you can connect them separately to two CPU headers if you have them on your motherboard, CPU fan headers. And then the top bits, the RGB connections, again have a daisy chain set up. So you have daisy chainable RGB lighting cables which then connect to the cover which has this infinity RGB lighting effect on it. And that in turn also has a cable which then either connects to a controller or to the RGB connector on your motherboard if you happen to have one. And so you end up with this, what looks like a mess now, but hopefully once it's in the case it won't look quite so crazy. But you have installation options, obviously you don't need to use the RGB fans, you could just have the Infinity Core and obviously I could ditch the fans entirely, which I will do when I've finished. But I wanted to do a build with this to demonstrate how to do it. Now the complexities of it are fairly well explained in the manual, so it's actually pretty easy, but I think it's handy to do a video before people are purchased to show how to do this sort of thing. Um, the pump head is obviously Azatec, so it comes pre-applied with thermal paste and for some reason they supply extra. They actually supply an extra tube of thermal paste in the box, which would be confusing for a new builder, I think, but it does say for future builds, which seems like an unnecessary extra from them, but I suppose a nice gesture 
be useful for me, for example, because I probably will be moving this to another system at some point. But that's how far I've got now. So now what I need to do is think about the process. Do I put this into the case now to demonstrate how that's done? Or do I mount the motherboard and stuff first? I think I'm probably gonna go for the motherboard first. And obviously I've got to put all this, go about installing all this, setting it all up, turning it on, showing it run with the RGB lighting and then completely replace it and swap out the fans. I could of course leave the fans like that, but I think it'll be interesting to have them without. So now I'm gonna go about the process of deconstructing my case, which it is currently, it's currently 9 p.m. so I've got to take my own PC apart and build it in a new case alongside a new cooler within the next four hours or something because it is a school night and I can't afford to stay up too late. So this is my usual case I've been using mostly for the last year. I have actually taken this out once before to build and the 5000D from Corsair, I believe. And then I had to put it back together. I also swapped out the motherboard recently. So I did upgrade it to be fair, but I mostly stuck with the same fans. I Lee and Lee AL120s, and then I've gone to SL120s because I think they look nicer. Um, so now I'm gonna take everything out of here. I say everything, I'm gonna leave the power cables and there's some hard drives knocking around at the back that I'll probably leave in there because I don't need them for this build and I don't know what my final plans are. Over the other side of the room in a box I have a fractal torrent which I think will probably end up being my main case but I don't know yet. I do really like this case and so I'm loathe to, to, to abandon it completely because it's very good, it's got really good airflow, it's massive, it's easy to build in and it's visually appealing as well, it's a very nice looking case. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is I want to demonstrate all the thought process that's gone into what I'm about to do because it's not just a case of taking out what's in here and putting it in a new case. There's some complexities to it and also a time management thing because this is going to take a fair amount of time to do. Obviously, because I've already got the other case built with the cable, power cables for example, that's going to save a lot of time. That will shave some time off. But things like trying to get these fans out is going to be tricky because all the cabling is at the back of the case. However, I've had an idea in that because the uni fans can basically be easily disconnected with a clip, it should be fairly straightforward to take this apart. So I'm going to do that and leave most of the cables in place and deal with that another time because I actually have a load of spare cables somewhere in the room. <laughs> or in the cupboard, which I could basically use to reinstall these fans in the other case. So that'll make life a lot simpler. And the reason I'm showing this is to demonstrate the sort of thought process and the effort that goes into a video, because if you just watch the air video, you'll probably see me build, you'll see a very short snippet of me building a case and constructing it and you won't really see all the effort that's gone into crafting a machine from multiple different points because it's two lots of fans. It's actually going to end up being two different motherboards and a lot more complexities than it will look like. And I think I've been thinking for ages about how to do this because I've got, you know, I've got that Z690 motherboard that I built with. I could have left that in there. I could have just taken my fans out but I'm actually at a stage now where it makes sense to... Ugh, this bit's always horrible. I don't want to stab the motherboard by accident. So the reason I'm showing all this is because I want to demonstrate how much effort goes into what I'm constructing. I'm obviously taking apart my daily PC, which I need for work tomorrow, so I need to make sure I have a working machine by tomorrow. I also have it set up in a, in a way that I really like it. So I don't really like taking it apart and risking potentially one, not having a PC, although I can work off a laptop if necessary, and two, having the headaches of having to move everything out and just a load of other things. It becomes a bit awkward, but also just simple things like fans. Like I want to use these fans in the other case. I could buy new ones, but I need 140 mil fans really two SL120s or two AL120s 
are 50 pounds, 60 pounds, and I'd need nine of them, I think I calculated. <laughs> so that ends up being a lot of money to spend on a case that I probably won't be using long term. But I do want to demonstrate what these fans will look like in that case. So to sacrifice for the quality video that I'm hopefully going to produce, I'm going to take everything out of here and put it in the new case just to be able to demonstrate that. And this is part of the background thought process that goes into my videos and a lot more effort than people might realise when they only see a minute or two or five minutes worth of footage. And I've just undone something I didn't need to, damn it. So, as I said, because I'm going to leave all the cables in here, this should be fairly straightforward. I already have all the power supply unit cables. It's not going to be easy, but it will definitely be not as hard as it could be, so that's going to be a bonus. So I'm just going to unplug everything to start with and extract the motherboard. You see, I have several hard disk drive connections. I'm actually only using two, I think, at the back. Also, as a side note, this is a black Kraken Z73. I actually have a white one that I've been meaning to put inside this case for a while and haven't got around to. So I could use that as an excuse. I'm not sure I'm going to end up. I have at the moment, four different PC cases in my office and three different motherboards, so I could potentially build some different machines. And I'm curious as to what I'm going to end up with as my daily driver, I'm not really sure. I know I want to move to 12th gen because it's superior to 11th, but there's a lot of other considerations like what's my favorite case and etc. I'm going to take the Kraken off. I need to coach. Clean the CPU pump and the and the CPU itself. Actually, before I do that, the other thing I'm trying to get into the habit of doing is putting screws back where they came from, so that I don't lose them because I end up with so many screws in different places, and then I'm wondering where they all came from. Even something as simple as a thumb screw can be worth just stashing away back where it came from even though when I come to install something in this next time it will cause me a headache the Kraken remains my favorite AIO at the moment it's a very nice looking all-in-one cooler and with only one complaint really at the moment, and that is that it pushes too hard against the RAM, which is unfortunate. It's only a problem if you've filled all four slots, but you can see it pushing up against the RAM here. It hasn't had any ne negative implications on it. Well, I suppose over time it could damage it. So they could do with slimming the pipes down or slimming the pump head down or something because it's the only AIO I've seen this problem with. Ah. And on the underside is unfortunately now ruined but that's fine because I have another one. This is a thermal grizzly pad, which you've not seen before, is a thermal pad which you can use in place of thermal paste. And it's great because it makes life a lot easier because you haven't got to worry about whether you put it on correctly, whether you put too much on or not enough. One thing you'll note though, unfortunately, is that they don't last if you take your system apart. This one's just, I've just ruined this one, but you can see how it would sit. It's just a thermal pad that sits between the CPU and the pump head, and it makes life a lot easier because now I haven't got to clean the CPU. I completely forgot that I'd done this. So it'll be very simple. And it's basically just a really thin material. Cost effective, easy to use. 
The other things I need to do is to remove the back plate, but I'm going to leave that for a minute. And I'm going to check I've removed all cables, which I have. No, I haven't. Remove that one. So this is a Z590 motherboard with an 11th gen CPU in it and obviously 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. My long-term goal is to probably end up in a Z690. I have multiple NVMe drives in here that I'm gonna to have to take out. But for tonight, for the purposes of this exercise, I am going to simply remove the motherboard. I'm also going to try and hold onto these screws because obviously the motherboard screws come with the case. You need to make sure you hold onto those and don't lose them. Because as I said, I probably will end up keeping this case because I really do like it. and. I don't know whether I'll end up using the Air Mini or not. My experience actually is really interesting with the Air Mini so far, if you're interested. And that is that it's a very quiet case with the three standard fans, even if you include the two Noctua fans. Now, from what I've seen, it's wonderful. Now I'm trying to remember if there's, usually there's nine screws I can't remember one if there's one under that bracket. Find out when I try and lift the motherboard up, I suppose. Now, obviously I'm not gonna use any of this footage in the actual video because people don't really need to see the behind the scenes. I'm really only recording this sort of behind the scenes footage for people in the audience that might be interested. And now I need to move the camera because in my drawers is the anti-static bag somewhere. Mm. All important ESD bags, not quite the right size for the motherboard, but it's only gonna be temporary. I'm just gonna put this on, it's probably from my GPU, I'd imagine. But that means I can lay the motherboard on top of it temporarily so it doesn't get damaged by any sort of static problems. Well, I... deal with the case. So as I said a minute ago, I'm now gonna put these screws back in here, simply so I don't lose them. Probably need some sort of screw organization system. So now the motherboard's out, I can go about the process of installing the pump bracket on it for the new pump. plate, standoffs, and bracket. And I can demonstrate that all outside the case, which is the easiest way to do it because it makes it a lot simpler for footage purposes because the lighting is superior. These are the other things you need to consider. Something as simple as trying to get some footage of putting a um, all-in-one pump inside a case, installing the radiator, installing the brackets and the standoffs, installing the pump head, installing the CPU fan cable, all require good lighting and angles where you're not making life very awkward. And unfortunately, that is not as easy as it sounds. But before I do any of that, I am going to uninstall these fans. And I want to demonstrate the clip that I was talking about, right, so here, is a clip for the fans. So now I can take those fans off and they will mostly stay intact. They just need cleaning up. There we go. And these fans are wonderful because of the way they connect together. Now, I think I'll probably install three on the top of a case and then I need two for the rad, two for the bottom, one for the rear. So these are actually pretty clean as well. I think they too do that here, which is nice. The only thing that I need now is the control box of the fans. 
which is at the back. And is luckily easy to access. Okay, excellent. So this little control box, so obviously this connects up to 16 fans, if you don't know already, in groups of four maximum. Four, eight, 12, 16, yeah, that's right. Four, eight, 12, 16, yeah, 16 maximum. But you can have less, which is obviously what I'm gonna do. And then it has a USB connection to the motherboard, a RGB connection to your motherboard, and a system fan header for PWM control and then SATA power. So it's fairly straightforward to connect. I will need to use that obviously when I set up the new case. As you can see, here is a reason that I did the previous video on how to clean up your machine and why you should, because that is absolutely filthy. It's full of dust, as is this area. I am not gonna blow that around right now because <laughs> it will lead to all sorts of messiness in the room and ruin my <laughs> video. So for the moment, this case is just gonna get relegated, sadly, to being not used. The next stage is gonna be, first of all, removing this back plate. And then reinstalling the, f and then installing the Fantex one, and demonstrating how to do that on video. You could argue that that sort of video is pointless because people could just read the instruction manual, but I know people have found it handy in the past for other ones. It would be nice to be able to do, for example, an AM4 installation. I'm gonna do this so that the standoffs and thumb screws sit together. And then at least I won't lose them. Some sort of crazy logic. In fact, I could go really crazy and just take the back plate off and install it in there because I probably will end up using the Kraken again at some point. I actually paid for that one myself, which paid dividends. I've invested a lot of money in a lot of products over the last couple of years to, with the sole purpose of doing videos. But the Kraken Z73 I purchased not only to do a video, but also because I wanted it and I thought it looked awesome. NZXT sent me the X73, or was it 63? No, 73 I think, which I thought was nice, but the 73 looked fantastic. I asked them if they had stock review samples they could send me they said no so i purchased one it was 250 pounds it was not cheap very expensive but very nice looking i created a video on it and that video has done well and it has probably if memory serves paid for itself which is obviously the ultimate monkey i have however also purchased other things including the snow edition from Leon Lee and this Air Mini case. And if neither of them do well, then obviously I'm at a loss. So business operations of the provoked prawn don't always go to plan, but such is life. Right, now to capture some footage of this. more observant viewer might spot a new boom arm as well. I'm now using the Rode PSA 1 Plus, which is superior, although it still wobbles, which is a constant nag. It doesn't wobble for as long and it seems a bit sturdier. And therefore, very useful for getting the camera into multiple positions, as you could have seen there. The next thought process is whether I try and install the pump head 
or at least to demonstrate that pro process while outside the box. I actually think that would be counterproductive because obviously it's got thermal paste on it and if I put a thermal paste on then take it back off again that causes problems. But at the same time it would be really nice to be able to show how to mount it. I think I'm just going to have to do that inside the case because I don't want to mess up the thing. So now I am ready to install into the new case. Or at least I think I am. So a contemplation of how I do this. Do I install the fans first or the motherboard? And I think I'm going to go for the motherboard based on my past experience with the Snow Edition because I don't want to repeat that because it was a right nightmare. So I'm going to install the motherboard first. I technically don't need footage of this because I already have it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I've also rather foolishly put all my screws together, so now I've got to hunt down the motherboard screws before I can do this. The installation in the Air Mini was a lot easier than it was in the Snow Edition, mostly because I'd learnt from my previous mistakes, so I didn't install the fans before the motherboard, which make life a lot easier. And the case itself is also interesting because it has a variety of different mounting points for things like SSDs and hard disk drives. So you can install like six SSDs in this case. Also the fact that it can hold a ATX size power supply unit makes it a bit more appealing than the Mini Snow Edition which requires a small form factor PSU. The end result as you can see is a really nice looking setup as well. I think this is definitely preferable to the standard setup with just the standard non-RGB fans. However, you will note at the bottom, for example, those two 120mm fans look pretty horrific. I'm not a fan of that setup with the gaps on either side. I think two 140mm fans would certainly look better in this setup. Unfortunately, I just didn't have them. Also looks a bit weird to have two 120mm at the bottom and three at the top. It is also strange that I haven't made enough space at the bottom for three 120mm because it looks like there should be enough especially when I compare it with the Snow Edition, which did have three at the bottom. The only factor really is the sort of size of the bottom tray, and it doesn't seem to be negatively impacted by those front-mounted fans either, so it's a very odd design choice. However, a nice setup. Now, one of the things you might notice here is I'm not running a rear exhaust fan as well, which is another curiosity of this, and that's because I didn't have enough control boxes because obviously now they're in four groups of fans two on the radiator three on the top two on the front and two on the bottom which means that the control box is completely full up so in order to have another fan at the back of the SL120 I'd need another control box so these are all the different complexities of the build and hopefully an interesting insight into it be sure to check out the proper videos linked in the description to see more thanks for watching this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.